Hello, and welcome back for another episode of Monday Morning Manager. My name is Dylan Meehan, and on this week's episode, we're talking about what we learned from what was an incredibly busy week for Manchester City Football Club. In just a few days, we saw that Pep Guardiola has hinted that he might be managing City next year, that Manchester City's lawsuit against the Premier League has reached a verdict. No one really knows who won or lost. We learned that Kyle Walker's future may be at center back. Oh, and on top of all of that, Chiki Begaristein, City's director of football, longtime friend and former teammate of Pep Guardiola, is leaving the club at the end of the season. There are two things from this week that I want to highlight, and the first is about Guardiola's future at the club. Yes, Chiki will leave in the summer. It is a massive deal, and it does not help City's chances of convincing Guardiola to stay. However, this is likely not a shock to him either. This wasn't a recent decision. If you remember Jack Goggins' bomb during the title parade, it was expected for him and Guardiola to leave in the summer. And Ornstein's report even mentioned that a successor has already been agreed upon and will likely be announced early in 2025. Before the news dropped about Cheeky leaving, Pemp hinted at something in his post-game presser, and I don't think that was accidental. Pep sarcastically thanked the Premier League about next season's start date not being pushed back a few weeks due to the Club World Cup. The Club World Cup is expected to start on June 15th and won't conclude until nearly a month later on July 13th. The Premier League usually starts on the second weekend of August, which would mean an August 8th start date for next season. Some of you see that and think it's just another manager complaining about something. What's new? Well, it matters because Guardiola's contract expires on June 30th, 2025 smack dab in the middle of the club world cup so why would he care about the start date for a season he's not currently at least publicly under contract for so for me that shows a likelihood of him signing an extension to add fuel to the fire sam lee of the athletic reported that he's currently in abu dhabi fulfilling commercial duties if we put our tinfoil hats on Guardiola has a history of signing these extensions during international breaks while in abu dhabi there's no guarantee signing an extension or staying past the summer. I mentioned on last week's show that I actually think Rodri's injury increases his chances of signing an extension. And this makes me even more confident he'll stay. Second thing I want to talk about is something that I picked up from the Fulham match. And it's that I think Rico Lewis might be winning the right back spot. And because of that, Kyle Walker might have a future at center back. Rico Lewis continues to get starts at right back. And so far, the only match he hasn't started in this season was against Arsenal. Whereas Kyle Walker has now played center back twice in two weeks. First was against Watford, and then briefly it was against Fulham. I didn't think much of it during the Watford match. It's a League Cup game against a championship side. Who cares? But against Fulham, when Guardiola brought him on as a substitute with only a one goal lead, that's when I realized this might be the plan for the rest of this season. So why? Well, for me, it seems like Pep is trying to have his cake and eat it too. Manchester City's current setup with Rico stepping into midfield is similar to the treble winning season with John Stones doing a similar thing. When you look at Manchester City's passing patterns throughout the last few seasons, it highlights a clear reliance on shuffling the ball from one side of the pitch to the other from the defensive midfield. But with Rodri out, it seems as though the brunt of that responsibility will fall on Kovacic and Rico Lewis but Rico has a tendency to push even further up the pitch alongside Gundogan and make late runs into the box. With Guardiol also pushing further and further upfield, it essentially leaves Kovacic, Diaz, and Akanji as the only line of defense. However, none of them come close to having the pace that Walker can provide. And for that reason, I think Pep is trying to find a way to fit both Rico and Walker onto the pitch at the same time. Now against Fulham, it was far from perfect. Walker came on in the 62nd minute and City gave the ball away cheaply on a few occasions that led to big counterattacks for Fulham. Stones came on for Foden about 15 minutes later to bolster the defense, but I don't think this is the last we'll see of this lineup. Guessing that Pep is trying this against lesser opposition as a trial run, but it wouldn't surprise me if this becomes one of the go-to formations throughout the season. Now look, it could go the way of Bernardo at left back and fail miserably there's a real chance this sticks, at least against lesser sides. So yeah, that's my theory. Kyle Walker may be entering his center back era. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, if you think it's a viable option, or if it's doomed to fail. Thank you once again for watching Monday Morning Manager. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Have a good one.